Hello everyone, glad to be back. Today is 15th of December, Friday, so I, I hope you have a wonderful day and I wish you a great upcoming weekend. Now it's uh, 7 o'clock in the evening Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my second update for a day in which I will share with you um, latest report of Russian Defense Ministry about progress of uh, special military operation during their entire previous week. I hope you will find the update interesting and uh, useful and if so please click that like button, leave some commentary about any topic you like and uh, share video with your friends. This is the only way we can fight back immensely unfair and aggressive YouTube uh, algorithm. And if you are subscribed to my channel on Rumble, uh, you will definitely uh, do me a favor if you will watch this update on, uh, on Rumble. Uh, you can see link of my Rumble channel on, um, in the pinned comment or under this video in the description box. Uh, later on, later on, I will have for Rumble additional, uh, exclusively for Rumble, additional update. Uh, another program of uh, another episode of uh, telegram reports program and a little bit late today i will uh, upload uh, update for uh, for on patreon also for patreon community i did already re uh, recorded video in the central part of uh, the city here in in dmitro with the with the new year's lightings and and so on hopefully patreon community will find it interesting and uh, dear friends if you uh, think to support my channel um, if you will subscribe on my patreon that will be a great uh, new year's gift to me you can see patreon link also on this video in description box or in the pinned comment okay enough for the uh, intro let's talk about news now and um, uh, well according to russian defense ministry according to russian defense ministry in kupiansk direction and this is report for uh entire week from 9th uh through 15th of december so, uh, well, in Kupiansk direction, units of uh, West Group of Forces of Russian Army improved the situation along the front line and repelled 27 local-scale counteroffensives of Ukrainian armed forces during the previous uh, week. Aviation, frontline aviation and artillery of uh, Russian armed forces inflicted losses on manpower and hardware of 117th Territorial Defense Brigade, 57th Motorized Rifle Brigade, 14th, 21st, 41st, 43rd, 60th and 115th Mechanized Brigades of Ukrainian Armed Forces near Sinkovka, Ivanovka, Yahidne, Petropavlovka and uh, Kupiansk. This is uh, all Kharkov region. And uh, when it comes to sector itself, this is uh, Kupiansk direction, uh, dear friends. Uh, Kupiansk direction main hotspots of course are uh, Sinkovka and uh, forested area right next to Sinkovka although of course local scale skirmishes are taking place in some uh, other settlements also in this direction and when it comes to Kupiansk itself this is the city which is divided by Oskol river almost in in half and forward units of Russian uh, military are just in several kilometers away from this town i believe i believe uh, during the winter offensive during the inevitable in my understanding russian winter offensive um, kupiansk will be one of the first uh, cities that will become under full russian control although not the only one that's for sure next is uh, or no let's continue with kupiansk first uh, as a result of these local scale clashes, artillery duels between the sides, drone wars, uh, Ukrainian armed forces lost uh, in this sector of the front line. Um, 425 military personnel, approximately, also five tanks, including one Leopard tank, 11 armored fighting vehicles, 12 motor vehicles, and three field, field artillery guns. So, Despite the fact that overall, in comparison to other sectors of the front, Kupiansk direction is relatively, relatively calm, if we can use this word when we are talking about 
zone of special military operation but uh, <clears throat> well despite this relative uh, calm uh, overall during the week uh, number of losses on part of ukrainian side is still very high very high and uh, at least that's what russian defense ministry is reporting about it 425 military personnel just in one sector uh, it's uh, it's a battalion it's a battalion uh, at least next is krasny liman direction where units of uh, tenth group of forces of russian army with the uh, support of frontline aviation and artillery repelled 11 local scale counteroffensives launched by assault detachments um, uh, of uh, ukrainian armed forces in addition uh, manpower uh, clusters of the 24th 63rd 67 mechanized brigades as well as the 1st, 5th and the 31st Ukrainian National Guard brigades were struck near Kirovsk, uh, Tarskoe, Yampol and uh, Grigorovka. That's Donetsk People's Republic as you can see according to Russian Defense Ministry. Ukrainian side is uh, still trying to conduct these local scale uh, offensive operations that the Russian units are calling suicidal uh, operations in uh, in attempt to regain initiative on any of the directions in the uh, northern sectors but uh, russian forces are locked and ready to repel all these uh, local scale offensives and uh, they are doing it quite quite successfully krasny liman direction is uh, significantly more intense when it comes to local scale skirmishes uh, in comparison to kupiansk direction and uh, as a result of it as a result of it um, According to Russian Defense Ministry, losses of uh, Ukrainian armed forces um, uh, during the previous week amounted up to 1,100 military personnel killed and wounded. Also, four tanks, four Ukrainian tanks were destroyed in Krasny Liman direction, three armored fighting vehicles, uh, 17 motor vehicles, and uh, two field artillery guns. So, as I said, the casualty number is quite high quite high in uh, Krasny Liman direction, uh, especially if we compare it uh, to Kupiansk sector of the front line, uh, 1100 military personnel, it's, it's two battalions, it's two battalions in usually, but in Ukrainian uh, realities, you may even say three because uh, many battalions in, in Ukraine only are like two, 300 men and that's it like brigades in ukrainian army are counting for two three thousand military personnel quite often when uh, usually brigades supposed to be at least uh, about five thousand but anyway let's uh, continue next is donetsk uh, direction usually most active sector of the front line for for quite a while and uh, in donetsk direction units of uh, russian uh, uh, south group of forces uh, with support of uh, frontline aviation and artillery improved the situation along the front line and repelled 49 local scale Ukrainian counteroffensives. In addition, uh, uh, manpower and hardware of uh, armed forces of Ukraine were targeted near Artyomovska, uh, uh, Klishevka, Kordyumovka, and uh, Grigoryevka. That's Donetsk People's uh, Republic. Um, losses of Ukrainian armed forces over the week mounted. Oh, sorry, that's. Uh, I get. Uh, I get confused a little bit, but anyway, let's continue. So, losses uh, of the Ukrainian armed forces in direction of. Uh, Donetsk sector amounted up to uh, 1,580 military personnel killed and wounded. Also, two Ukrainian tanks were destroyed, 16 armored fighting vehicles, 13 motor vehicles, and 31 field artillery guns. So, as you can see, artillery duels especially intense, especially intense in Donetsk sector of the front line, which is quite understandable because Russian forces are conducting. Uh, quite successful offensive operations on, on two main directions at this point on Donetsk sector. One is Avdevka, of course, 
and the other one is Bakhmut, flags of Bakhmut, northern flag and southern flag, and uh, to achieve, uh, of course, to achieve success during this local scale offensive operations, Russian side needs to suppress artillery, long range artillery of uh, Ukrainian armed forces. So artillery duels are very intense, very intense, and uh, as a result of it, Ukrainian forces just in this uh, single sector lost uh, 31 artillery systems. Although casualty numbers among manpower is, of course, as a result of in significant uh, significant intensity of clashes are also very high. 1,580 military personnel just in the week. Uh, huge casualties, huge casualties on part of Ukrainian forces. But yet again, did uh, Zelensky or his regime ever cared about casualties? Of course not. Next is Sovdonetsk sector of the front line. According to Russian Defense Ministry, units of uh, South group of forces repelled two Ukrainian local scale counteroffensives. And uh, with the support of Russian aviation, frontline aviation and artillery, uh, losses were inflicted uh, on 58th Motorized Rifle Brigade of Ukrainian Armed Forces and also 32nd Mechanized Brigade and 128 Territorial Defense Brigades near Novomikhailovka, Uglidar, Makarovka, this is Donetsk People's Republic, and also Livadna, which is Zaporozhye region. As a result of uh, clashes in uh, South Donetsk sector of the front line, Ukrainian Armed Forces during the previous week, lost up to 600 military personnel killed and wounded, three armored fighting vehicles, 14 motor vehicles and 11 field artillery guns. Yet again, artillery duels are very intense in this uh, area also. And as a result of it, uh, Ukrainian side is basically Russian forces are hunting down Ukrainian artillery at this point. We can clearly can uh, say it. And uh, I did share dozens and dozens of uh, videos on my telegram channel when russian lancer drones are uh, obliterating basically hunting down and obliterating ukrainian artillery systems um, next is zaporozhye sector of the front line main hotspot in zaporozhye sector is of course orekhov uh, bridgehead and according to russian defense ministry units of uh, russian group of forces engaged in active defense operations and uh, repelled eight local scale counteroffensives of Ukrainian forces and forces near Abotina uh, and the west of Verbovo. This is exactly Orekhov bridgehead uh, area. And during these local scale uh, offensives, Ukrainian forces were using assault groups of 108, uh, 128 uh, mountain assault brigades, 33rd, 65th, 117 and 118th mechanized brigades. Um, and uh, these uh, units, some units of these brigades also were targeted in Malay Takmachka area, Nova Danilovka and the Nova Andreevka areas also. Basically, this is a, these are brigades that are uh, located in Zaporozhye sector of the front line and uh, are taking huge, uh, huge losses uh, on, uh, on regular basis so when it comes to overall casualties during the during the previous week because the apology sector is uh, probably most uh, most uh, passive uh, during the last uh, several weeks casualty numbers are also quite low in comparison to some other sectors of the front and uh, well according to russian defense ministry ukrainian armed forces lost uh, in uh, Zaporozhye sector of the front line, about 335 military personnel killed and wounded, also 19 motor vehicles and three field artillery guns. And finally, uh, Kherson, finally, Kherson uh, direction. Uh, last week we did uh, observe significant de decrease in activity in uh, in his own direction although although at this point at least Kyiv regime still tries to maintain uh foothold on the left bank of the Dnieper river which is definitely uh, was a trap from the very first day of this so-called ukrainian uh, counteroffensive in in uh, her direction and 
Well, according to Russian Defense uh, Ministry, uh, all attempts of Ukrainian forces to land sabotage and recognition uh, groups on the Iceland's islands and the uh, left bank of the Dnieper River were thwarted. Uh, many units did not manage to uh, cross river or, and, and land on the left bank or onto the islands in the Dnieper River itself and the Dnieper Delta. Russian aviation and artillery uh, very intensively are delivering strikes at units of uh, 35, 36, 37 mechanized brigades of uh, Ukrainian armed forces, as well as 124th Territorial Defense Brigade of uh, Ukrainian Army uh, near Kherson, Berislav, and uh, Tyaginka. As a result of uh, preemptive uh, actions by Russian troops, uh, Ukrainian armed forces lost up to 290 military personnel killed and wounded, uh, 18 motor vehicles, 17 boats, and 9 field artillery guns. Well, uh, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, activity on uh, Kherson direction did decrease significantly, but yet again, the regime is still trying to maintain the small footholds. Not far away from Aleshki settlement, right next to Antonovsky Bridge and also Railway Bridge, and uh, in Krinky area. As a result of it, uh, they are constantly sending additional reinforcements, or at least trying to send additional reinforcements, reinforcements in the in direction of left, ba uh, left bank and also on the islands, uh, on the Dnieper River and the delta of uh, this river. And casualty numbers, casualty numbers are quite high, although I think uh, these numbers from Russian Defense Ministry are quite conservative because uh, lately even Ukrainian, even Ukrainian telegram channels are beginning to uh, talk about disaster uh, that uh, Ukrainian armed forces experience in Kherson direction. And according to some channels, one of the reasons why the regime is trying now to hold on to the small footholds in the left bank is that uh, if, if they will withdraw, Russian uh, side will uh, Russian side will make some videos uh, on the on, uh, former positions of Ukrainian armed forces and uh, will highlight how devastating this uh, entire Kherson operation was for uh, Kyiv regime. It will be a huge media defeat for uh, Kyiv regime, although they already lost this uh, battle, not just on the field, but also in, in media, because even in Ukraine, no one believes that they had any success on Kherson direction. And Kyiv regime, for a for, uh, few minutes of media lights, sacrificed basically at least uh, two brigades in this direction in the last two months, if we will combine overall casualties on part of Ukrainian army in this um, Direction. If we will combine casualties in manpower and also losses in military equipment, so let's continue. Let's continue. And uh, well, uh, air defense and air defense units of Russian uh, army intercepted one Ukrainian Air Force Mi-8 helicopter near Tyaginka a settlement, which is Kherson region. Also, one Tochka U tactical missile was uh, shut down over the Belgorod region uh, just a few days ago. Also, two S-200 anti-aircraft guided missiles were shut down. Uh, Ukrainian side is modernizing S-200 missiles, to, uh, and uh, after modernization, these missiles are capable to conduct ground-to-ground, surface-to-surface uh, strikes. They are <clears throat> operating like. Uh, ballistic missiles uh, and uh, two of them were shut down and also 17 high mars mlrs projectiles were shut down by russian air defense systems in addition uh, during the previous week 119 unmanned aerial vehicles were also intercepted by russian uh, forces also also interesting that during the previous week 82 Ukrainian servicemen were captured uh, or voluntarily surrendered. 25 of them uh, in the past 24 hours alone. And well, this is it when it comes to when it comes to short summary of the 
progress of special military operation during the previous week in Ukraine. I hope you will find this, uh, this video interesting. I will just uh, share now with you uh, overall numbers. Overall numbers uh, I did uh, calculated before I began recording uh, this video. And well, uh, according to Russian Defense Ministry, during the previous uh, week, Ukrainian armed forces on all sectors of the front line lost more than 400 and 300, 4,300, uh, more than 4,300 military personnel killed and wounded. At least brigade, at least one brigade. Uh, also, 11 tanks, including one uh, German made uh, Leopard tank, 45 armored personal carriers and infantry fighting vehicles, 93 different type of transport. Uh, different type of uh, motor vehicles also 59 pieces of artillery systems of different type and uh, 17 drones also one mi8 uh, transport helicopter of ukrainian air force were shut down this is it for this uh, short summary i hope you will find this update interesting and useful and if so please uh, consider to uh, click that like button, uh, leave some commentary about any topic you uh, find interesting and uh, please share video with your friends on any of the platforms that you are active on. Uh, I doubt that we will be able to reach uh, 20,000 uh, before end of this year as I was uh, hoping for but any uh, any support to reach wide audience uh, will be appreciated of course. And dear friends, if you think this project uh, with several channels on YouTube, Rumble, uh, Telegram are interesting, informative and deserves to exist in this field of news and political commentary, please consider to uh, support my work with uh, small donations through PayPal, buy me a coffee or by subscribing to my Patreon page. You will see links under this video in the description box or in the pinned comment. This is it for now. Have a great day and wonderful upcoming weekend. Take care.